This is Dr. Hayek and this video is about periodic trends in atomic structure. In this video I'm going to discuss electron affinity. This is going to be the second video on this topic. I have previously discussed the ionization energy in a similar video so please check it if you are interested. Electron affinity by definition is the energy change associated with the addition of an electron to a gaseous atom. The energy released when the first electron is added is called the first electron affinity. Now when energy is released, the value of the first electron affinity will carry a negative sign, which means it's an exothermic process. Now this is not always the case. We can see some of the first electron affinity have positive value. Now when comparing electron affinities of two elements, we should consider four main factors. The first one is the distance from nucleus, so to which energy level we are adding this electron. The second is the shielding effect, so how much repulsion we are getting from the inner electrons. The third factor is the electron-electron repulsion. Are we adding this electron to an empty orbital? or to have occupied orbital. And the last one is the effective nuclear charge. So the number of protons in the nucleus. Now in general, the electron affinity increases when we go across the period in a periodic table from left to right. And it also increases when we go up in a group. Now let's discuss why the first electron affinity generally increases from left to right. Consider oxygen and fluorine, where oxygen is to the left of fluorine. When we add an electron to each one of them, we can see that the energy released in the case of fluorine is much higher than that in the case of oxygen. Now, even though we are adding the electron to the same energy level, which means it's the same distance from the nucleus and we have the same shielding effect since we have two inner electrons for both. Now what makes this difference? Now the electron-electron repulsion is the same for both. However, the nuclear charge is playing the major role in here because we have 9 plus for fluorine and only 8 plus for oxygen. Now let's discuss what makes the first electron affinity decreases when we go down a group. If we consider lithium and sodium, where sodium is right below lithium, if we add an electron to each atom, now we can see that the energy released in the case of lithium is higher than the energy released in the case of sodium. Now the reason for this is that the electrons are not added to the same energy level, which means they don't have the same distance from nucleus. And also, the electron added to lithium is only shielded by two inner electrons. However, the electron added to sodium is shielded by 10 inner electrons. Now, for the electron-electron repulsion, it's the same in both cases, and the effective nuclear charge does not have major effect in this case. So the main two reasons here are the distance from nucleus and the shielding effect. Now, as we have said, the electron affinity will increase from left to right, so we expect it to increase, which means to become more negative. Now we can see that energy is required to add an electron to beryllium. In a similar way, nitrogen will require more energy to add an electron to it than carbon, even though nitrogen is to the right of carbon. And also, we don't see the same phenomenon with oxygen. We can see that when we add an electron to oxygen, energy is released. So we are going to discuss these exceptions. Let's first start by discussing the difference in the energy released between carbon and nitrogen. If we add an electron to each atom, we can see that the energy released in the case of carbon is way higher than that released in the case of nitrogen. Now, 
Notice that the electron is added to the same energy level, which means they are both to the same distance from the nucleus. Now for the shielding effect, they're both shielded by two inner electrons. However, what plays the major role in here is the electron-electron repulsion. The electron added to carbon is added to an empty orbital. However, the electron added to nitrogen is added to a half-filled orbital, which will result in a great electron-electron repulsion. Now here, the effective nuclear charge is not playing a major role. So let's check out now the difference in the electron affinity between nitrogen and oxygen. If we add an electron to each element, now we can see that the energy released in the case of oxygen is way higher than that released in the case of nitrogen. Now, the electrons are added to the same energy level, so it's the same distance. The shielding effect is the same since both atoms have two inner electrons. And the electron-electron repulsion exists in both, since both electrons are added to half-filled orbitals. Now what makes this difference is the effective nuclear charge. The nuclear charge of oxygen will be able to overcome the electron-electron repulsion, which is not going to be the case of nitrogen. Now let's discuss another exception, which is why fluorine has a lower electron affinity than chlorine. Looking at fluorine and chlorine, if we add an electron to each element, we can see that there is more energy released in the case of chlorine than in the case of fluorine. Now, notice that both electrons are added to half-filled p orbital. However, the electron added to fluorine is added to a 2p orbital, and the electron added to chlorine is added to a 3p orbital. Now, since 2p orbital is smaller than 3p orbital, the electron-electron repulsion in the case of fluorine will be more important than that in the case of chlorine. And therefore, the main reason of the difference between the electron affinity of chlorine and fluorine is the electron-electron repulsion. Now the effect of the nuclear charge of chlorine will be lowered by the increasing number of inner electrons which will provide some shielding. I hope this video is helpful to you, so please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time.